Hello Makers Gonna Learn crafting friends. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm so grateful to be crafting with you today. Uh, if this is your first time crafting with us, my name is Becca Oaks and I'm a craft producer here with Makers Going to Learn and I love to craft. Um, today we are going to be working on a baseball themed wreath to spruce up uh, your front porch for spring. How fun! Spring comes around, everybody wants to do new wonderful things, and I personally am a massive fan of baseball, so I thought this would be a really cute and fun project, a little bit different uh, for us to do with you guys today. Uh, today we're going to be using part of a cut file from Makers Gonna Learn, and we're also gonna be using a font from Makers Going to Learn. So if you are not a member already, go ahead and go to makersgonnalearn.com sign up for our yearly membership so you have access to all of these cut files um, our entire database of cut files actually plus our fonts and so many other benefits okay so our first supply is this steel ring that we have here it's a 12 inch ring it's four millimeters thick um, i believe we got this at hobby lobby and it is two dollars and 49 cents which we i'm sure got um 40 off so that makes it super super affordable um and you can see right here, this is soldered together. So we're just gonna snip that um, and we'll be able to put our baseballs on it for uh, to put our wreath together, which is awesome. Um, so on that note, we also have baseballs. It doesn't matter what kind of baseballs you have. If you're like me, you probably, and your family is into baseball, you might have like a whole tote of baseballs, which Honestly, I think it would be really cool to use used baseballs because they're worn in, they're dirty, they look awesome, they look legit. Uh, but for the sake of this, we just got a brand new bag of baseballs. Walmart has um, a 12 pack of baseballs and that is what we need for this. So that worked perfectly. Um, and then we also have, we're gonna make this home plate sign um, in the middle of our wreath. And I went ahead and cut this out. This is just out of plywood. Um, so what I did, and I'll show you this in Design Space, I made a template in Design Space um, with this shape, and I printed it out, and then I drew it on my um, plywood, excuse me, I drew it on my plywood, and then I just cut it out with a miter saw. Um, so we have this cute little thing, and I stained it with our uh, Minwax Special Walnut Stain, so you'll need that. Um, in addition, we are going to need black and red HTV. We're going to need um, an easy press mat, an easy press. I'm using the little one just because this is a smaller project and I think it'll be easier to hit all those um, little bitty pieces of heat transfer vinyl. We're also gonna need a drill with a drill bit that is long enough to go through the baseball. A standard one that I had in uh, my tool bag did not go all the way through, so I went to um, this one. Then we have a piece of wood just so that we can drill through the baseball um, and hit our wood and not our table. I have this E6000 uh, clear flexible uh, glue. I love this glue. And then we have some jute so that we can hang our um, home plate sign from the finished wreath. And then we have some different ribbons. We're gonna make a ribbon for the top of this. Um, I have this fun burlap one, and then a red striped one, a white grow grain, and a red grow grain. Uh, and I'm not really sure what we're gonna use yet. We'll see once we get in um, what we like the best. So in addition to all of this, we of course have our die cut machine. Today I'm using a maker, but you could definitely use, um, you could use your Air 2 or even your Joy actually for this project because it's a smaller project. Um, and so I just have a standard grip mat and I have my fine point blade. And that is it for supplies. Okay, now we are ready for the design space portion of this project. This is a super easy design space. Um, put together and so I'm going to show you really quickly. I have put here um, just some basic shapes that help us visualize the project. We here at Makers Gonna Learn love to do that. That's one of our favorite hacks. It just helps you size things better um, and, and place them really well. So all I did was put in a circle and I sized it to 12 inches because that's the size of the outer portion of our finished um, wreath. And then 
Let's see here. Oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't 12 inches. With the baseballs, it added it to 13 inches. So let's change that. 13 inches, and then the inside, um, I just measured from the inside of one baseball to the other, which was right around nine inches. And so I'm gonna put a nine inch circle in here. Size that up to nine inches. Whoop, there we go, nine inches. And now I'll place this on top of this circle. I'm gonna select both circles, go up to a line in the top part of Design Space, and press Center. Now I'm gonna go over in the right hand side all the way down to the bottom where it says slice and I'm gonna slice out the middle of this circle. That way we know uh, what the spacing is here. There we go. So we'll just change that to blue just because it's prettier. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna make this home plate um, portion of it. Like I said earlier, I did make this in design space so that I could print it out as a stencil and then cut it out on my plywood. So all I did was use basic shapes. So I'm gonna go over to the left-hand side where it says shapes, press my square, um, and then I'm gonna unlock this size ratio. I did go online to see uh, that a home plate um, measurements are 17 by 8.5. So we've got that. And then we're going to add a triangle. So we're going to rotate it to 60 degrees so that it will be flat. And then we're going to make it bigger here. so that it's the same width across. And then you pull this down. This, um, it's 12 inches. So it's supposed to be 17 this way, eight um, on the side of the, the rectangle part, and then the long portion of the um, triangular part is 12 inches. Now, if you can eye that if you want to, or um, you can get out I mean, you can kind of see here what the dimension is. What I did was get another square, make it 12 inches. So I know that this length of this square is 12 inches. And then I can just kind of rotate it like this and eye the size of it. So I can see that it's still um, not long enough. There we go. And guys, this does not have to be this exact. This is just the way that I like to do it. Um, anyway. So I'm going to delete that and then I'm just going to make this level back up and I'll wed weld these two together. So the square and the triangle I'm going to weld together. Let's align them really quick just to make sure that they're aligned good. Yep, they're good. So we'll weld those together. We have one shape and now what we can do is size this down um, to fit in our wreath here. Voila, super easy. Now what we would do um, is, like I said, I, I would hide all these other layers and then I would just hit uh, make it and then I could draw this out using a pen or I could print this out if I wanted to print it out like a print and cut, I could print it out. Um, and then I, I just cut it out with my scissors or you can cut it out with your machine if it's a print and cut and then traced it onto my plywood. Okay, so uh, the other thing that I did, I went ahead and I drilled this hole in the top of the home plate so that I can attach it to my wreath. So uh, when I'm designing, I wanna make sure that I have that hole represented so that I'm not putting um, any HTV or uh, design on top of where that's gonna go. So my hole is a quarter inch, so I'm gonna put in a circle change that down to 0.25 inches and then I'm going to it is a quarter inch down I'm just going to eye this but you guys could measure it if you wanted to it's a quarter inch down and it's right in the middle of my home plate so now I'm going to um, center it horizontally and now I'm going to slice that out so that I have a little hole represented perfect now I'm ready to actually do the design so I used a cut file from Maker's Gonna Learn. It's a baseball cut file. Let's go ahead and upload that. You can see it right here. And we will insert that image. But I don't need the circle here. So what I'm going to do um, is just, I can hide that layer or I can delete it. I don't need it. 
Um, and then I'm only going to use one of these right now. And because it's uh, one layer together, I need to slice it out. So I'm just going to add another shape, size that up so it's covered, and then select both and slice out what I don't need. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is just kind of rotate this and size it down where I want it, just like this. And I can duplicate this and flip it so that I can use it up here. Now, one thing I will say, I don't want, I could size this down so that it fit on here, but if I do that, then the laces will be a different size than this one right here. So what I'm gonna do instead, I mean, I could kind of rotate it so that it's like this, uh, but you're still gonna have some hanging over. So what I wanna do is just slice off um, the extras there that I don't need. And then I'll bring this back up. And now it fits on there well. So that's super easy, guys. And now all I have to do is add my text. So I'm just gonna go over to the left hand where it says text. And then I'm gonna do these one word at a time just because I think it's gonna be easier to place. Um, you could write it all out if you wanted to. That's what I typically do. Um, but we're gonna try this method really quick. Um, so I'm gonna type in theirs and we are using the font Highlight Real. This is one of my favorite script fonts that we have. Oh, I did forget to mention, for whatever reason, this font does not have an apostrophe. So um, I'm gonna eliminate that and I'll add an apostrophe from another font in just a minute. Um, so now all I need to do is um, size this up just a little bit so I can see what I'm working with and then change the letter spacing. So I'm gonna kern this down. Um, so that all of this comes really nicely together. I'm gonna ungroup this because I do want my T to kind of come in. I just personally like that look. If you don't like that look, that's totally fine. Now I'm going to go back and add another text box with my apostrophe. And let's just pick a random, uh, I think this one has an apostrophe, it does. So we can use this apostrophe right here and no one will know the difference. So I'm gonna select all of those and group them so that when I move them, they all go together. Size it down a little bit. Now I'm just gonna do the same thing with all the other text box. So no, size it down. Oh, I'm still on Chloe. Let's go back to highlight reel here. There we go, that's better. Still making it smaller so that everything touches nicely. There we go. Make it a little smaller to fit in there. Now we're gonna go with place. Again, kerning all of this down. And guys, you can do a better job than I. I'm just kind of doing this quickly so that you guys don't have to watch every single bit of this. <laughs> but you can do it however you want to. Um, sometimes if I want these letters to be super, super close together, like this P and the L, like I did up here, I will slice off the end. So the tail of this P so that they can be closer together. Um, I'm going to show you really quickly how I do that just on this one. I'm not going to do all of them. So I'll ungroup it. I'll take this P over to the side. I'll take a basic shape, add it on there. And then I'll just, whoop, I will just slice off the end of that P and delete everything that I don't need so that I can pull this in really close without the tail of it coming up here or over here. So that's a little trick that I like to do if I like um, my fonts to be closer together. So I'll size that down, bring it up here, and then we're almost finished here. We're gonna have like, Letter spacing again, make it bigger here. See, and we can still move this E over a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna ungroup so I can just move that singular one, group back together and bring it over here. But guys, this is, this is obviously why I like to do them one at a time. That way it's easier to move these around and really place them how I want them. Let's make place a little bit bigger. And then we've got home that we're gonna add. 
and you can see here I cut the tail off of it here so that they could be super close together and then I made the M come up just a little bit um, that's just the design that I chose I liked the way that it looked but you do not have to do it okay so we're gonna select all of these oh it's still grouped so that's great bring it over here move place up just a little bit so home will fit and there we go you guys can play with this more you can see on the left hand side i i did a better job of of placing that but you guys get the idea of how i did all of that so um, now all i have to do um, is hide this layer because i don't need it and then this layer and this layer um, i can just kind of move over here and all i want to do is select all of this text and weld it together um, and as you can see when i did that the o um, filled in that is because my N is too close to my O so I want to unweld just by uh, doing the back button that's the only way that you can get rid of a weld um, and then I want to ungroup this really quick and just move my O over a tiny bit so that when I weld again my O um, isn't filled in so that's great um, now I am ready to hit make it because I have uh, welded all of this together uh, we're ready for that. Okay, so now you can see once we hit make it, um, it puts it on the separate mats like we want. So we're gonna have one mat with black HTV and one mat with red HTV. Because this is HTV, we wanna make sure to mirror our projects. Um, as you know, if you've worked with HTV before, um, it, the Maker or Air 2 or your die cut machine does cut that upside down, sort of backward, however you want to describe that. So it does need to be mirrored. Um, now we're ready to press continue. Okay, and now we're ready to select our material. We are using iron on today. Let's find everyday iron on. Let me go ahead and star that. If you didn't know, you can favorite the materials that you use the most just by coming over here and clicking that star like I did. Um, so now it will be, let's go back up here really quick. You can see it's added to my favorite, so I don't have to go search for that. It's something I'm going to use a ton of, so I do want it favorited. So I've selected Everyday Iron On. I'm going to put a little bit more pressure on it, um, and then I'm ready to load my mats and cut the, the vinyl. Okay, it is finished cutting, so we are ready to cut off our extra here. I'm using my precision control knife. I'm going to just cut off those extra so that I can use this um, for another project. This is a lot of vinyl that I can put in my scrap bin. So we have this here. Just grab my favorite weeding tool. And because this is HTV, I don't need to burnish. So I can just go ahead and pull off uh, the extras. We at Makers Gonna Learn love to um, encourage you to weed on your mat because it does act like a third hand. It makes weeding much easier. You're not trying to wrestle it to keep it down. Um, so if that's not something that you've done before, try it and see if you like it. See if it helps you. Let's see here. This is coming off really easily. There we go. And this isn't a super, super skinny font, so I don't have to worry too much about um, any pieces like ripping if I were to try to do it too fast. So that's nice. If you're doing, if you were gonna do a smaller version of this, um, that would be a concern of mine for sure. I'm just gonna get all of these little extras out. All right, that was quick, guys. Quick, quick, quick. Now I'm going to remove this so that I can load my red HTV on and cut our baseball stitches out and then we will be ready to apply everything. So that's loaded. I'm going to just insert it and cut those out. Okay, now that we have all of that weeded, um, I did cut off the extras uh, from that transfer the transfer backing paper, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that way it is easy to place. So I'm just going to start placing where I think I had. And the nice thing about this one specifically is where we slice that off, um, you can kind of get the idea of where it needs to go based off of the angle of the slice. So that's cool. So we're just gonna put that right up there. And then we can move these around if we need to in just a second too. 
Um, we've got this here. And what I'm going to do right now is just go ahead and kind of put this right here just to make sure um, that I've got everything in the place that I need it. Yep, that will be good. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one put on with my Easy Press, a little mini Easy Press. I do have it set um, just on the first setting, it is 300, and now I'm just going to. Um, Start ironing it on. So guys, we're looking for bubbles. That's how we know that this is finished. Um, you can look underneath and once bubbles start forming, uh, you know that it is applied. It's actually really quick. I always think with these specifically, like this little easy press, um, it always messes with my head. I think that it should take like 40 or so seconds. Like like it should with a larger easy press, uh, but it doesn't and I love that. So once you see those bubbles and you're pretty happy, then you can start lifting, uh, let it cool. And then you can lift to see um, if it has adhered or not. Okay, so we have the bubbles. I've let it cool a little bit and so I'm ready to just gently pull this up to make sure it is adhered everywhere and it has. So that looks good. If for some reason some piece were wanting to come up on you, you would just lay that plastic down um, and then apply more heat to it. There we go. Had a little bit of the adhesive come out from under it. So I'm just kind of um, wiping that off so that it doesn't look odd on there. Much better. Now I'm ready to place this part. Okay, so now that I have this placed on here, I do wanna point out, if you have your little plastic pieces left over, uh, the transfer part from your red, then you can go ahead and put those back on, or you can grab a Teflon sheet um, and cover the whole project because you don't want your iron to hit, or your Easy Press, excuse me, to hit um, the the stitches that we've already put down. If you do, it will melt those for sure. But if you put you know, the, the transfer sheet back on it um, or this Teflon sheet, then you are good to go. There we go, that's good. We are finished with that. I love it, how fun. And now we are ready to um, put the actual wreath together. Okay, so now we are ready to drill holes in our balls. This is so exciting. It's super easy to do this. These are regular baseballs. I do want to say, so there is a core in there that is sort of dirty. You will find out pretty quickly. Um, like I mentioned earlier, make sure that you have a drill bit that is long enough to go all the way through your ball. Also, make sure that your drill bit is at least as wide or you know the diameter is the same as um, your actual hoop because you want the hoop to go through the ball. So now all we're going to do, you can take a clamp if you want to with this. Um, you could clamp the ball and then go, but honestly, like I, I'm just gonna wing this. It's gonna be fine. Um, so I'm just gonna put it up this way, put my drill bit straight on it, and then I'm gonna just start drilling down. Once you hit the wood, you can back back out. And you see that the core that came out, I told you it was pretty dirty. <laughs> so there's one, we'll do another one really quick. There we go. And then you'll just do all of the balls that way, straight in the middle like that. Um, that way we can put them on the hoop. Okay, so we have our hoop here, and remember I said that this hoop was soldered. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's soldered, so we're just going to take, I forgot to mention this earlier, you will need um, some wire cutters or something that you can cut this with. Uh, so I'll just put that right where it's soldered, and then um, it may take a little bit of pressure. You may have to go around it just a few times, but it's not horrible. There we go, and we are ready to put our balls on it now. Okay, so we're just going to start putting the balls on, just threading them on. 
super easy. You guys saw how easy that was to go on. Um, obviously, the bigger that you make your hole, the easier they are going to, the, the easier they're going to go on, excuse me. Um, so keep that in mind. You don't want them to be huge because you don't want to see them. But you can see I'm having a little bit of trouble here um, just finding the other end of the hole. No big deal. I'm just going to put all of them on just like that until my hoop is full. Okay, now that I have all of these threaded on, I'm going to put my last one on here. And then you'll see we have some extra here. That is absolutely fine. So one reason that I would make um, your holes a little bit bigger is because we're going to put these in the holes on this ball. Um, and so what I'm going to do is grab some E6000. Let me get some gloves too because I might get this on myself. Um, and we're going to put a dab of glue on around the holes. Um, push the uh, holes on both sides. We're going to push these into those holes. And then if we feel like we need some extra glue on top of that, um, then we can put some extra glue. Okay, now that I have loved up, I'm just going to take my E6000 here. If you guys haven't used E6000 before, it is an awesome adhesive. It does take a little bit of time to dry. It's not a quick drying glue like um, hot glue or other glues, but it, the bond is really, really good with it. Um, so that's why I like it. Okay, so I do have it around those holes. I hope you can see that. And now I'm just going to push the ends of this hoop into the balls, just like that. I need to move this out and then just kind of squish your wreath together until there's no spaces. You don't want spaces in between these. Although, guys, I did see, it was really cute, um... A wreath done similarly to this that did have spaces in between and they took ribbon and tied a ribbon knot in between each one I thought that was really cute I don't think that we're gonna need any more glue because um, we have an excess right here which is perfect that's what we want super easy guys so that just needs to sit and dry the dry the suggested dry time um, on E6000 is unfortunately longer than what I love, but it's fine because it does a really good job. Although I have um, noticed that when I've used it in the past, I used it to make some badge reels, which would be like uh, metal on metal. Um, within 24 hours, it was good to go. So hopefully this is as well. Okay, so now that we're finished with assembling the actual ball part of this wreath, we're ready to put our little home plate on. So all I'm gonna do is take some jute twine, whatever you want to call it, grab a pair of scissors, cut a nice piece off, and then I'm going to do a little knot through here. I will just thread it in there, and if you have trouble getting it through your hole, um, take something like a weeding tool or something that's pokey that you can uh, push it down in with, and fish it out the other side. I should have probably made my hole a little bit bigger, but that's okay. There we go. I'm going to loop that like that. And then I can tie this up here. I do want it to hang a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to kind of pick it up so I can see a good height for it. That's cute. Right now I'm just twisting it around, but I will probably knot it. There we go. So that it stays nicely. So cute. And then what I will do is put my bow up here and I'm going to show you guys how to make that in just a second. Okay. So for this bow, we are just going to be using a uh, three inch wired burlap ribbon. This is just a simple bow. This isn't one of those fancy ones. Um, it's baseball. It doesn't need to be super fancy. Um, so we're just going to take a good amount. You can always cut these bows down smaller if you want to. Cut it off here and make a simple bow. Just like you would tie your shoes, guys. And what we're gonna do is pull this through here. It looks really ugly at first. That is supposed to happen. And then you just pull it down, fluff it up, and make it prettier. Now, one thing that I want to do is add a little color in my bow. 
So before I make it super, super, super tight, I'm going to continue to fluff it. I want this to kind of be straight, um, and it is looking that way. What I'm going to do is take just a couple pieces of ribbon. Again, I can make these shorter, so err on the side of caution and make them longer. And just put it right through the center there. Just to add a little bit of fun color. What I would probably do is kind of fold these and then um, cut the bottom so that it's pretty like that. Again, I'm folding. Now we have a pretty bottom on our bow. And then you can glue this bow directly to the wreath or you can grab some florist wire um, and attach it at the back. Just wrap it around so that it's good and tight. And then at this point, um, you'll attach it to your wreath. Okay, now we are ready to put our bow on our wreath. So we're just gonna take, like I said, if you wanted to glue it, you could just glue it straight on like that. Um, but since I've used this florist wire, that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm just gonna wrap it around up here, right where I have positioned um, the jute for the home plate sign. And I will twist it a couple of times, just like that. And then you'll cut off the excess. I'm gonna hide mine for just a second. And then um, just play with the bow to fluff it and make it look pretty. Okay, guys, we are finished with this fun baseball themed wreath. Not themed, it is a baseball wreath. Oh my goodness. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you got some fun tips and tricks and that your creative juices are flowing and that you can make some awesome things to spruce up your porch for this spring. Thanks so much for watching. If you aren't a subscriber of Makers Gonna Learn's YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe so that you can get other crafty, wonderful videos like this. Like this video, leave us a fun comment. Thanks so much. Have a good day.